Finance. Welcome back. Well, the equity market neutral strategy has been the best performing of the equity based strategies over the past 12 months. Now, the idea of the strategy is to strip out as much of the market risk as possible by being 50% long and 50% short, which lifts the odds of getting a positive return regardless of the direction the market is moving. Tech Invest's Intercept Capital Fund is one of the best performance in this strategy, running at an annualised rate of return of 9 and 3 quarters percent. CEO Rick Steele is in the studio along with Australian Fund Monitor's Chris Goslin to discuss how the fund makes its investment decisions. Welcome back. You were obviously just here a moment ago. Yes. But talk me through the actual strategy, if you can, in sort of layman's terms. Well, the, the strategy is actually a very transparent, very straightforward, tried and trusted method of investing. Putting it simply, we try to identify stocks that we think are going to outperform and we invest in those. And at the same time, we look for stocks we think are going to underperform and we sell those stocks. The key is that we're able to match the risk of investing long in markets with the risk of, of uh, selling so that we end up with no, effectively no market exposure. So the market can rise, the market can fall, but whether our fund returns a positive return depends on our stock picking ability. So is that a, a pairs strategy that you use primarily? Pairs is not the strategy we employ, but it's a, it's a strategy that is employed by some market neutral investors. What we try and do is to build a diversified portfolio of longs and match that with a diversified portfolio of shorts with the best stocks in each of those portfolios, not attempting to pair necessarily yeah. one against the other. So you don't other. necessarily have the same amount of um, stocks in the same sector or you don't go sector v sector, it's just what you see to be the best we, and the worst? And Yeah, we, we try and um, remove factors like um, the capitalisation of the stock or the industry, um, the geography, and we try and uh, produce diversification in that way, mm -hmm. but we don't necessarily uh, match pairs in a very strict uh, way. So you, you, you're investing in stocks from anywhere in the world? Correct. How do you do the research for that here on the ground? Well, the, the, the beauty of uh, investing these days is there's a lot of information available at your fingertips. The key is to be able to capture it in a very systematic way and in a time that you can make good investment decisions. And we have a process to collect both uh, quantitative and qualitative data uh, and deliver it to us in a very systematic way that enables us to make decisions on whether to hold mm. stocks or not. Does the extent of, I mean obviously what we've seen over the past year has been, we haven't seen it before for quite some time, mm. does the extent of the, the downside or does the extent of the fall of the market impact on your ability to produce an absolute return? When markets are travelling in a neat fashion which they were uh, in previous years, it's a bit tougher to eke out value. But in these sorts of uh, times when uh, you get mispricing and volatile mm. movements, it actually makes it just a little easier. So it, it's, um, it's always hard, but yeah. in volatile times for market neutral funds, it's probably a little easier. So the volatility is good. It helps. You in a nutshell. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry, no. how, how, how long does your average investment last for? I mean, there's, there's often talk about hedge funds being very aggressive and diving into a market, selling something down and, you know, pushing it down. We understand that that's uh, um, more innuendo than anything else. Mm. But, what's your, for instance, what's your average um, investment time or time frame? We, we would tend to hold stocks uh, on the long side and on the short side for a little over one year. So we may have uh, short sales that have been in place for one or two or three years. Um, it actually takes a lot of time and effort to come to a decision to invest or short sell in the company and you want to make sure that you get the correct value from that. So in answer to the question, it's uh, more than one year. How do you, um, how important is the, the way in which you research? Do you focus more on fundamentals or do you focus um, more, I mean, the, the name of your company is called Tech Invest, so I'm just wondering if that <laughs> suggests well, that there is a lot of technical analysis going on? We, we use technology to capture data and mm -hmm. I think in the old days, it used to be, uh, be a very craft industry oriented process. You would capture data the best you can, you'd build it into spreadsheets, you'd try and compare those with others in your group. What we do is we use technology to capture all that primary data very quickly, very efficiently and very accurately. So that explains the, the tech bit mm -hmm. of it. But the other aspect of tech in our name is that we look for companies that are impacted by change. Whether they're impacted by change in a positive way or impacted by change in a negative way. These are the sorts of things which can bring companies completely unstuck or they can make a company successful. 
And that allows us to take a medium to long-term view of the success of those companies. So can you give us an example, and I know hedge funds are notoriously shy about saying what they're longing and shorting, but can you give us an example of um, you know, a company here or, or overseas that you've gone long or short on because of what you've seen on the change horizon? OK, well, the first thing I should say is that we are so shy. We actually publish both our investments and our short sales on our website with a bit of a lag so that we don't give <laughs> yeah. too much chance for front-running, but it's, yeah. it's there as a guide to how we go about our job. On the short side, um, a good example is a company like Sirius Satellite Radio, which was on the forefront of satellite radio in the US in the last few years. However, you know, there's a company that we judge to be uh, not particularly well managed for change, and it was in a battle, I guess, with things like the iPod and, and, way, and the way people captured okay. music yep. and news. So, um, of course, it depends on price, you know, the share price, but we judge that uh, those longer-term trends weren't built into the likelihood of success of that company. Mm. On the long side, um, we've been seeing a lot of opportunities in medical device companies and uh, biotechnology companies where technology is being able to help accelerate the processes of improvement. And we've been long-term investors in a number of those companies and they've been very important in terms of the return that we've achieved through here. Okay. Um, I want to bring up one final graphic which just looks at sort of, we've got five, I'm not sure, Chris, these figures are from you, if, if this means these are the only five that you follow or just these are the five best. No, these are the, the, these are the five best five market best. neutral funds yep. over the past 12 months. Um, Sorry, Rick, you're number two there. Let me just we can work on that. Chris. <laughs> you're there by you're uh, you're number two by one quarter of one percent. So that's pretty. Sorry, good. that should say twelve month return, not January yeah, return. That's, that's, uh, my book. That, that's twelve month. If uh, January returns are fantastic, yeah. but I think that's uh, that's a twelve month return. What was it like for you having that ban come in? How did you move around it, or did it not have a particular impact on what you were doing? Well, the nature of our strategy being global meant that it didn't actually impact us day to day. The thing that concerned us through that period was just the heightened heightened level of political risk, mm. not just in Australia, but globally, and also a heightened level of counterparty risk. So we actually adopted a much more cautious stance post-September, but not because we were enforced to do so, but because we felt it was just a sensible thing to do. We've been uh, rebuilding our positions uh, from that level over the past few months and are now about 50% uh, long, 50% short, but we could be, if we were confident, um, much higher than that. What's your view then on the Australian financials? I know um, in the interview that we had with Kim Ivey on Sunday Business and we spoke to him about um, the financial stocks and what might be likely to happen when the ban comes off and he said, look, he thinks already most of the, the bad news has been factored in um, and he doesn't actually expect there to be much of a change if and when the ban comes off. Is that, would you agree with that? Well, if you ask me to predict what would happen to share prices on the day that it happens, mm. I would say most likely it would be a random event. It mm. might depend more on what happened in New York the night before. It might depend on a particular set of financials for a particular company. Um, but it's unlikely to be impacted by you don't think the short selling. Specific band. sort of, they're not living in a bubble of, you know, being specifically supported. And Look, I don't think so. Yeah. You know, I don't think so. And that, that's sort of the shame of having the ban in place is that it probably is not fulfilling a purpose that has been set out to do. Yeah. All right. Rick Steele, Chris Gosling, we're out of time. Thank you both very much for coming in. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice to That is all we have time for in this edition of Absolute Return. If you've got any questions or comments about the program, or if you've got any asset managers you'd like to hear from, drop us an email, yourmoney at skynews.com.au. I'm Kylie Merritt. Thanks for your company.